In this NPV masterclass, we will solve an advanced level NPV problem covering almost everything you need to know to be able to prepare for your finance exams, such as working capital, inflation, taxes, depreciation, calculation of cost of capital and VAC, calculation of discount rate and discount factors, working capital recovery, replacement adjustment, financing costs, and budgeting concepts. And you will frequently encounter all of these problems in a net present value exam question. So if you are a finance student studying corporate finance, financial management or business finance this net present value lecture will clarify all of your concepts let's get started and look at the capital budgeting question that we are going to solve in this master class first of all we have data related to initial investment including the cost of new machine and working capital note that I have also included additional capital investment additional working capital as well as the partial working capital recovery so we will discuss how to deal with this type of situation then we have the sales proceeds of old machine so here we will also learn how to do a replacement adjustment. Next up we have the budgetary production in units for 4 years as well as the sales price and opening closing inventories. But we don't have the sales value or the number of units sold and that's another twist I've added in this problem. So we will have to use budgeting techniques here to find out the number of units sold and then calculate the amount of sales. Next up we have expense data as a percentage of sales and if we don't find out the sales value we will also be unable to calculate those expenses. And that's very practical from the examination perspective because normally things are not that straightforward in the exam and of course you're going to face these type of complexities in your exam so you should know how to deal with them then we have the inflation data in which again we have two further problems number one the inflation rate is different for both the sales and expenses and number two the inflation rate is also not same for all the years so here we will learn how to adjust cash flows when we have the variable inflation rates going forward we have the tax rate which is always a problem area for most people in capital budgeting and on top of all these complexities we also don't have the discount rate to calculate the net present value instead we have got the information to calculate the discount rate so we will need to have the knowledge of cost of capital and capital structure to solve this part and overall that's pretty much everything your examiner is expected to challenge you with so let's start solving this NPV problem step by step and I will be explaining further details one by one going along with this video. I will start from the top and deal with each piece of data one by one. First of all, we will see the items that are straightforward. So we will just put them directly into our calculation. That's really very important from your examination point of view. Just focus on the part you are doing and leave all other things. Because you've already read the question, so you should know what items require additional adjustments and what items you can directly plug into your calculation. Our first item is the cost of new machine which is the initial investment and based on its useful life we can conclude that the project length is 4 years. So I've put together an NPV calculation format on the next sheet based on this data. Let's put this $100,000 as a cash outflow in the year 0 column of our template and we have some additional information here as well. That says the machine will be sold for $10,000 at the project end and its salvage value is $5,000. We will need this information when we calculating the depreciation so for now we will leave that part and I will highlight this with a green color to remember that we have done that part next we have additional investment of $20,000 that is required in year 1 that's straightforward so let's go ahead and put this as a cash outflow in the year 1 column we don't need any further adjustments here then we have the working capital of 30,000 that is required initially, which means that we need this in year 0. There is also no further adjustment here, so let's put that cash outflow in our NPV calculation as well. Let's move on and now we have additional working capital of $10,000 that is required in year 1 and year 2 each. So let's put a cash outflow of 10,000 each in year 1 and year 2 column of our NPV template. Let's come back and here we have further information that says the working capital will be 20% recovered in year 3 and 70% in year 4. So in total we are recovering 90% of the working capital. Let's go ahead and find out how much total working capital is invested. So 30,000 initially in year 0 plus 10,000 each in year 1 and year 2. That's a total of 50,000. And the question says that it is 20% recovered in year 3. So 20% of 50,000 is 10,000. And 70% is recovered in year 4 which is 35,000. That's a cash inflow because we have received our investment back. So I'm gonna put that in the year 3 and year 4 columns accordingly. 
remaining 10% is not recovered so we will simply ignore it and we don't need to do any further adjustment also remember to only do the working capital recovery adjustment if the exam question is specifically mentioned that working capital is recovered if no percentage is given assume that it is 100% recovered but if nothing is mentioned about the recovery of working capital do not assume that it is recovered and do not do the recovery adjustment also remember that taxes do not apply to working capital because that's a principal investment amount and not the return on investment let's move on and our next item is the money received from selling the old machine and the additional information here says that the old machine will be scrapped if new machine is acquired so that's a relevant cash flow and we need to consider this in our NPV working. I am gonna put 5000 as a cash inflow in year 0 column because we have received the money. But that's not all. Note that we are given the book value of 8000 as well. So if the book value is 8000 and we have got 5000 from scrapping it, this means we have incurred a loss on disposal of $3000. But does that matter? The answer is no and yes as well. How? Let's understand. The loss on disposal will go to the provision loss account or income statement so that's an accounting accrual adjustment which means that's not a cash flow so that will not enter into our npv calculation but we do need to do a tax adjustment here so 3000 loss multiplied by 30 percent tax rate equals 900 tax saved and i will put this as a cash inflow in year zero column of the npv calculation template confused let me explain this with a comparative example. Assume that company's profit before tax is $5,000 and in the first case we do not have any loss on disposal but in the second case we have a loss on disposal of $3,000. So what happens? In the first case the profit will remain $5,000 and the company will pay 30% tax on that profit amount which is $1,500 but in the second case when the loss is claimed the profit will be reduced to $2,000 and now the company will pay tax on this amount so claiming the loss reduced profits and as a result the tax amount is also reduced without loss the company was paying 1500 in taxes but with the loss now the tax is reduced to 600 now if i minus 600 from 1500 it equals 900 which is the tax that we have saved by claiming this loss and that's exactly the amount we have entered into our npv calculation as a cash inflow i am sure that now your doubt is cleared and with that, we have also completed our initial cash flows part. Now we will move forward and start dealing with the operating cash flows including sales, cost of sales, other expenses, depreciation and taxes. So let's look at the next piece of data which is production in units. And down here we have sales price as well as opening and closing inventory for the first year. In the additional information we can see that the closing inventory should be 10% of last year's units sold. But the problem is that we do not know the number of units sold. So we need to apply a budgeting technique here to find out the number of units sold. Let's understand how these production units were calculated. If you remember, in budgeting we often use the reverse formula to calculate the production which was cost of sales plus plus ending inventory minus opening inventory equals to production. In this case, we do have the production units but don't have the cost of sales and we are given the opening and closing inventories. Now if I rearrange this equation to solve for the cost of sales, this will become production plus opening inventory minus closing inventory equals the cost of sales. And that's exactly what we need. So let's plug the values that we already have in this equation. Number of units produced for first year are 27,500 and we have opening inventory of 2500 and closing inventory of 2250 units. So solving this equation for cost of sales will give us 27750 which should be the number of units sold for the first year. Now this closing inventory for the first year will become the opening inventory for the next year and we already know that closing inventory is 10% of last year's sales that we have already calculated. So let's multiply last year's number of units sold with 10% to find out the second year's closing inventory and solve this again to find out the cost of sales for second year and similarly following the same logic we will find out the number of units sold for remaining years now that we have got the number of units sold let's multiply them with the sales price to find out the sales amount but we are not done yet we know that sales are subject to inflation so we also need to adjust these cash flows for inflation from the additional information we can see that inflation rate is 10 percent for first three years and 15 percent for the last year so let's put the inflation factor down here the formula to calculate inflation factor is one plus inflation percentage raised to power the number of year in consideration so i will put one plus ten percent raised to power one 
2 and 3 respectively as an inflation adjustment factor for the first three years and for the last year i will simply change the percentage to 15 percent so the formula will become 1 plus 15 percent raised to power 4. let's multiply these inflation factors with the sales amount we have already calculated to find out the inflation adjusted sales values and i'll bring them into our np working right here next we need to find variable costs and fixed operating expenses which are 40 percent and 15 percent of the sales amount respectively also we can see here that variable costs and expenses have the separate inflation rate so we will take the sales amounts that are not adjusted for inflation and first of all multiply them with 40 percent to find out the variable costs and then we will apply the inflation factor to variable costs just like we did while calculating the sales amount so we have also adjusted variable costs for inflation let's bring them into our npv calculation template as well now let's adjust fixed costs similarly and bring them into our npv calculation sheet accordingly the process is same so i'm not gonna explain this again then we have r d costs which are incurred three months ago that's an example of irrelevant sunk cost which will not impact the project anyway so we will simply ignore this in your finance exams you will frequently see the data that is irrelevant so make sure that you study relevant costing in order to correctly determine what should and what should not go into the npv calculation all these topics will be somehow included to test your understanding in the exams after this we have the tax rate so we will do tax adjustments when needed right now we will ignore this and move forward to the final block of data which contains information to calculate the discount rate that is required to calculate the present values of future cash flows and ultimately the net present value but that's not very straightforward here as well we need to scan this data to find out how to calculate the discount rate and through which method so here you are required to use your knowledge of cost of capital and capital structure before diving into this part let me quickly give you an overview of the components included in a WAC calculation and i'm sure you will find it very useful we know that to calculate the WAC, we need three elements number one cost of equity number two cost of debt and number three the weights for cost of equity your instructor may require you to use dividend valuation, dividend growth, CAPM or net income approach which is also called m and model. For cost of debt, the examiner may challenge you with irredeemable, redeemable or convertible debt. For the weights, you may either use book values or market values. That's all. No whack question goes out of these things and once you understand this logic, all other things become fairly straightforward. Equipped with this information, now let's look into the data we have to determine which model we should use to calculate our discount rate or WAC in this case. We can see that we have current share price as well as the dividend declared. Then we have retention ratio and ROI followed by the details related to debt and the market values for both the equity and debt. If you have studied cost of capital, you know that current share price and dividend is used to calculate the cost of equity through the dividend growth model. And we know that the formula to calculate the cost of equity using dividend growth model is current dividend multiplied by 1 plus growth rate divided by the share price plus the growth rate. So let's plug the values that we have into this equation. But here we have another problem. We do not have the growth rate to complete this equation. However, we know that in cost of capital, we either use compounding annual growth rate or Gordon's growth model to estimate the growth rate. In this case, we have retention rate and ARR, which means we should use Gordon's growth methodology. So we will simply multiply the retention ratio with ARR to find out the growth rate. The formula is also called G is equal to BR. So 40% multiplied by 10% equals 4%. We have got the growth rate. Let's plug that into our equation and solve for the cost of equity, which is 11.70%. Let's also quickly calculate the cost of debt as well. There is no further information, so we will assume that the debt is irredeemable. And the formula to calculate cost of irredeemable debt is interest cost divided by the current market value. That's straightforward. The market value is here, so let's divide the interest cost with this market value to find out the cost of debt, which is 9%. Finally, let's calculate the weights using the market values that are given in the question. Remember to use market values if available to calculate the weights unless it's specifically asked in the question. With that, all three components of the cost of capital are done. Now we can go ahead and plug all these values into the WAC calculation template to find out the discount rate that we should be using to calculate our NPV. Multiply the cost of capital with the weights to find out the WAC, which is 10.5% in our case. And I will round this to 11% for the sake of simplicity.
with that we have almost done everything except for the depreciation so let's go back here and we can see that the cost of machine is 100,000 and its salvage value is 5,000 with a useful life of 4 years so 100,000 minus 5,000 divided by 4 years equals 23,750 which is our annual depreciation expense let's use this depreciation amount to create a schedule as follows but note that depreciation is not relevant here because that's not a cash flow what is relevant is a tax allowance or tax savings so let's multiply each year's depreciation with 30% tax rate to find out the amount of tax saved. And we have to do one final adjustment here as well. The book value of machine is 5000 and it is sold for 10000. So we have got the gain on disposal of 5000. So we have a cash inflow of 10000 and we will also pay 30% tax on the gain of 5000 which is 1500. That's done. Now let's go back to our NPV working and start putting the remaining values. First of all, I will put depreciation expense that we have just calculated and we will ignore financing costs because those are irrelevant as well. With that, we have arrived at the profit before tax amount. Let's apply 30% tax to that and calculate the after tax amount. Finally, we will do the adjustments. First of all, let's add back the depreciation because that's not a cash flow. And I will also add tax savings as a cash inflow that we have already calculated. Then I will put 10,000 cash inflow for new machine sales and 1,500 tax that we have paid on disposal. And now let's calculate our net cash flows. And we have already calculated our discount rate which is 11%. So finally let's calculate the discount factors using this rate to work out the present value of the cash flows. The formula to calculate discount factor is 1 plus discount rate raised to power the year in consideration with the minus sign and multiply them with the net cash flows. So we have calculated the present value. Now we will simply sum all of them to finally calculate the net present value which is around 34,000 positive. Means that based on NPV we should go ahead with this project and i also provide online training and tutoring services so if you need any assistance feel free to get in touch with me directly you will find my whatsapp and other contact information on the main channel page as well as in the description of this video that's all for this video i hope you find it useful if you have any questions feel free to comment and subscribe to ic certified accountants for further updates see you in the next video